this is Sage Schneider. We are going to do, we are going to do Rain Tree English. Okay. This is the contents. And we finished all these, uh, all these two uh, themes. And next is the uh, third theme. Colors of Love. And in the Colors of Love, we are going to do the fifth lesson, the parrot who wouldn't talk. Let us start. And this is the page, the parrot who wouldn't talk. Okay, this is the warm up. Tell your teacher what is happening in this picture. They are telling uh, to explain to the teacher what is happening. Look, this man, okay? He's mm, taking his tongue out, and the monkey is seeing it, or a baby monkey. And then after that, he stopped uh, taking his tongue out. The monkey started it. And when I was growing up in Masuri, when I was growing up in Masuri, when the narrator was growing up in Masuri, almost all our neighbors kept a pet parrot or a parakeet. That means almost all of the neighbors kept a pet parrot or a parakeet. Parakeet means it's a type of a parrot. Sometimes these birds would learn to talk. That means the birds, the parrots, or also parakeets, they will learn how to talk. They would say things like, study, child, study, or don't be greedy, don't be greedy. They are saying that uh, the parakeet or pet parrot would say the things like, study, child, study. Or, don't be greedy, don't be greedy. These words and phrases were, of course, learned after some member of the household had repeated them many times in front of the bird. That means, some of the neighbor in the house have repeated the same thing so many times in front of the bird. But our parrot refused to talk. The narrator is saying that his parrot refused to talk. And Ruby had brought it from a bird catcher who sold caged birds. That means Aunt Ruby, the narrator's aunt, had bought it from a bird catcher. Bird catcher means who catches birds who sold caged birds. Well, he kept them in a cage after a few months. Though, Granny and Grandfather were not happy about keeping caged birds as pets. That means the Grandmother and Grandfather were not very happy about keeping caged birds as pets. And Ruby insisted on, insisted on, means it made the demand on keeping the parrot and teaching it to talk. And Aunt Ruby made a demand on keeping the parrot and teaching it to talk. But the bird immediately slid my aunt. But the bird it quickly disliked the narrator's aunt. Next page, page number 56. Kiss, kiss, on Ruby would coo, putting her face close to the bars of the cage. And that means kiss, kiss, with that. And Ruby would coo, putting her face close to the bars. In this picture, okay, this is the flashback. And she, w uh, she was near, uh, she was putting her face close to the bars. Bars means like these lines. Do you see those? That's the cage, just barge. She would coo in front of the bird. But the bird would back away. That means the bird would go back 
its little eyes getting even smaller with anger. That means its little eyes getting smaller. The parrot's eyes is getting smaller and it's getting angry. Once it suddenly dived forward and knocked Aunt Ruby's spectacles off her nose. That means once it suddenly dived. That means it got it put its face out of the um, bars and for, um, gone forward and knocked Aunt Ruby's spectacles off her nose. After that, Aunt Ruby stopped showing her love for the parrots. That means she stopped showing the love that she had given for the parrot. She came, she became unfriendly towards the poor bird. That means she uh, she became unfriendly. Unfriendly means not be, uh, not being a friend. And she made faces at it and called out, "Can sing, can dance, and other nasty comments." That, that means she made faces at it, nasty faces, and called out. Can sing, can dance, and other dirty comments like that. It became my job to feed the parrot. Then it became the narrator's job to feed the parrot. It looked quite happy to receive the green chilies and ripe tomatoes. It was very happy to receive the green chilies and the ripe tomatoes from the uh, from the hands of the narrator. Then it was the mango season. I got to eat a couple of mangoes while feeding the parrot. That means when it was the mango season, I, uh, the narrator got to eat so many mangoes while feeding the parrot. One afternoon, while everyone was enjoying a short nap, I gave the parrot its lunch and then purposely left the cage door open. That means one afternoon. You understood that one afternoon, while everyone was enjoying a short nap. That means uh, everyone was sleeping. The narrator gave the parrot its lunch and then purposely. That means that means doing something knowingly. He left the cage door open. Seconds later. The bird was flying freely into the mango orchard, I and mean, after a few seconds, the bird was flying freely. It, uh, it was flying around, roaming everywhere, and it got into the mango orchard. Grandfather came onto the veranda and remarked, "I see your aunt parrot has escaped." Veranda, veranda means. Look at the next page. This. The veranda and re uh, he remarked, "I see your aunt parrot has escaped." That means uh, the parrot has escaped. The door was quite loose. I said it with a shrug. Well, I don't think we'll see it again. The door was quite loose. That means uh, the door. It was not tight. It was loose. Like he said it with the shrug. That means with a slight movement of the shoulders to say he does not know. Like this. Look. Like this. With the shrug means like this. And Ruby was upset at first. That means she was very upset. Hmm. Hmm, they uh, the narrator promised hmm, to buy her a bowl of goldfish. The narrator said hmm, they promised to buy her a bowl of goldfish, like uh, some fish, probably. The parrot pop probably missed its green chilies. A few days later, I found it sitting on the veranda railing, looking at when. Intently at me with the tail cocked to one side, I gave the parent half of my mango. Probably means 
maybe and expectantly this is the word expectantly with a hope of something good while the bird was enjoying the mango and ruby called out look there's my parrot it must have missed me with a loud squawk a parrot flew out of her reach perched on at the nearest rose bush glare that ran through the end screens in my aunt's familiar tones. You're no beauty, can't talk, can't sing, can't dance. Okay. While the bird was enjoying the mango. That means when the bird was eating the mangoes when it was enjoying and Ruby uh, seen the parrot and said, Look, there is my parrot must have missed me but with a loud walk the parrot flew out of her reach and came to the nearest rose bush where the mint like it and the parrot stared angrily at aunt and screamed at my aunt's familiar tones the same thing that aunt ruby said the parent repeated it. You're no beauty, can't talk, can't sing, can't dance. And Ruby dashed and Ruby writ and dashed indoors. So Ruby writ means as writ as a ruby. That means it's a precious stone. And Ruby went to Ruby writ and dashed indoors. That means she quickly came indoors. Indoors means like going uh, inside the house. But that wasn't the end of it. That means it was not the end yet. The parrot became a regular visitor. That means it, uh, the parrot also became a visitor. Then I read so and Ruby, it will call out. You're no beauty, can't talk, can't sing, and can't dance. The parrot had learned to talk after all. The story was made by Ruskin Bond. I'll be back on the next episode. Thank you, Mom. Please take care. Bye-bye.